Iris Mistreet office has issued a statement uh, uh, and uh, the main uh, uh, allegation in that statement is that uh, a lot of expenses that uh, were incurred during Cyrus Mistry's time at Tata Sons were really legacy expenses left behind by Mr. Ratan Tata expenses with respect to engaging someone in place of Neera Radia uh, that was Arunanda of Rediffusion, a 60 crore expense because of that, a 30 crore expense merely to maintain the chairman emeritus office uh, and uh, the more important uh, uh, impairments and write downs. Uh, uh, again, only the TTSL issue was a legacy issue. There were other expenses uh, that uh, Mr. Ratan Tata had incurred uh, by uh, picking up an investment in Nagaja re refineries, in one Sasol JV, in a Piaggio Aero, all of which resulted in losses to the tune of 1,150 crores, according to uh, Cyrus Mystery's office. So uh, the reply coming straight back that. Uh, uh, a lot of the ex if we were not paying enough dividends, if the Tata Sons uh, uh, balance sheet and PNL were showing weakness and losses, uh, the blame quite squarely lies on decisions taken by Mr. Ratan Tata and in fact for Mr. Ratan Tata, according to this statement. Well, Kritika Saxena is here with us, but uh, uh, Kritika, uh, you have a more interesting story. Oh, these statements from Cyrus Mystery are coming about unlisted decisions with respect to the unlisted Tata Sons. But with respect to the listed uh, entities of Tata Sons subsidiaries, uh, uh, you are seeing that uh, uh, Ratan Tata's uh, control or Tata Sons control mm. has been strengthened. Absolutely, uh, Rata. So, you know, what we've been trying to understand is where the minority shareholders are because uh, we believe and, you know, in fact, we had seen some of the shareholders at Bombay House last week as well that uh, Ratan Tata and Tata Sons have been meeting minority shareholders to help them understand or at least present where the group companies stand. Now, uh, if you look at LIC shareholding, LIC is the second largest shareholder after Ratan Tata. So, if you look at the numbers, they speak for themselves. Tata Steel, they have about 13.9 percent. 3.2, Motors 5.1, Indian Hotels 8.8, Tata Power 13.1, Tata Chem 3.3, Tata Global 10.2. So aside from Tata Chemicals, if Tata Sons has LIC on board, then they are pretty much winning the game. Now, what we do understand is LIC seems to be favoring and is leaning towards Tata Sons. They may abstain for voting in some cases, but in the case of highly deleveraged, com highly leveraged companies like uh, Tata Steel, they are likely to vote in favor of Tata, Tata Sons. That's what they're our not, sources tell you? That's what our sources are saying. And again, they're not taking sides here. It's based on what is good according to their investment committee, their investment decisions for the independent group companies. Okay, uh, we actually, Mr. H.P. Ranina, uh, the famous corporate lawyer is with us. Mr. Arina, two separate stories, one picked up by our uh, uh, deputy head of uh, the Bombay Bureau that uh, what she's picking up from LIC sources is that because uh, their bread is buttered on the Tata Sun's side, uh, they would rather uh, uh, ensure that they vote with that block or at least not prevent that, uh, 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 you know, de denude the power of Tata Sun's. Uh, your thoughts, sir, isn't that logical? Uh, how uh, a, a shareholder would behave? Well, uh, certainly in the past, uh, LIC has uh, supported the promoter group. But here the issue is a little more complicated because the promoter group itself is a little fuzzy and there's no clear-cut uh, promoter group as such. Now the issue will be that obviously they will want to know the other side, uh, the point of view from Cyrus Mystery Group. So I think, as you rightly said, Investment Committee of LIC or whoever the powers would be, mm -hmm. will look into both sides and then take a view. If there is a, you know, something which is not clear-cut, mm -hmm. then I think they'll abstain from voting. That's the best thing that generally they do. Okay. Uh, well, separately, uh, the question of uh, this uh, GEC, the uh, Group Executive Council, being an kind of an extra constitutional authority, which was one of the uh, charges raised by uh, the Tata Sons Group, which is the Ratan Tata Group, is being countered by Mr. Mistry in a new missive that we have got. Uh, he says that uh, under Ratan Tata's leadership, uh, several group, C, uh, group center members uh, who were deemed non-executive uh, uh, in their roles were, uh, including Ratan Tata actually, were being compensated in the form of commissions from Tata Sons instead of salaries and that skewed the base year comparisons. Uh, the, he goes on to say that uh, 
the GEC, which Mr. Mistry had created, drew remuneration only from Tata Sons and did not take any commissions from the operating com uh, commit, uh, companies. And this arrangement was cleaner, more transparent system to ensure that those who are involved in running the group were remunerated by the group and not by the subsidiary companies. Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, I think uh, what uh, <laughs> Cyrus Mr. did was a refinement of the earlier position. Mm -hmm. But uh, the question is uh, how you remunerate them is, doesn't really matter whether the money comes directly from the subsidiary companies or from the group company, mm -hmm. holding company. <laughs> I think what is important is not the form of remuneration. What is important is how well the companies are being run and what is the good corporate governance uh, procedures which are being followed. Mm -hmm. So this GEC, of course, is a normal thing. I don't think that anybody should uh, take any, uh, you know, cognizance of it because it was meant to assist the chairman of the Tata Group mm. to come to a certain decision. The point is that every single decision of GEC was to be put before the board of each individual company. Mm. And the independent directors of each individual company would then decide the issue on merits. Yes. And should not be guided by either the GEC uh, decision or the decision of the principal shareholder. Mr. Ranina, again, going by this letter, I'm reading out certain points uh, which Mr. Uh, Mystery is offering as a rebuttal to the charge of rising costs over the last couple of years. He, he points out two uh, developments. He says that uh, a new agency, a new PR agency was appointed just before the uh, dismissal or replacement of Mr. Mystery, and the costs were higher. He's talking about how Mr. Neera, uh, Neera uh, Radia was uh, charging 40 crore rupees per year. The new agency was charging 60 crores. And uh, he goes on to say that a noticeable part of this PR infrastructure was also provided to Tata Trusts while being paid for by Tata Sun. So that's one point. Then he, again, he goes on to talk about corporate jets, which were being used by Mr. Ratan Tata. <clears throat> he says the figure was about 30 crores in 2015. Uh, uh, Tata Sons was bearing the entire office costs of the chairman emeritus, Mr. Ratan Tata. That included corporate jets. And the cost was 30 crores in 2015. Uh, how do you see some of these uh, sort of arguments that have been thrown in by Mr. Mystery in terms of explaining why costs, operating costs were rising at Tata Sons? Well, he's entitled to give his point of view <laughs> as far as operating costs are concerned. But this is entirely left to the directors of Tata Sons if they feel that they should incur his expenditure on uh, Mr. Ratan Tata's corporate office and his, uh, you know, his corporate jets. I think so be it. We, I don't think we should question that. But he's only trying to explain as to why the costs went up. And if the Tata board directors took a conscious decision to incur those costs, well, they, they have to accept that. Okay, Mr. Arina, finally, I wanted to ask you, you know, going by what uh, um, uh, our uh, uh, colleague uh, Kritika is reporting, LIC, like you as well agreed, uh, would really want its money secured. Uh, if uh, a company like Tata Steel is backed by a, a small 18% sh uh, Shaparji Palonji, or even not even that, if Tata Sun simply says that if this gentleman is the chairman, we are not backing the debentures, there's trouble afoot for LIC, which holds, uh, what, 5% uh, in uh, Tata Steel. Uh, uh, you know, it's only logical that this battle is going to go to the strongest or to the owner. Doesn't it look that way? Yeah, I think it looks. So your assessment is quite correct. If the LIC sees that by backing the Tata Group, they are going to secure their investments in a much better way, certainly they'll do with the uh, Ratan Tata Group. But if they feel that Cyrus Mystery can also do the same job and can assure them that their investments are safe, then I think they will, uh, you know, not uh, participate in the voting and abstain. So do you think that n hereafter the battle can take two shapes? Uh, for extremely leveraged companies like Tata Steel, you will find dominant shareholders and independent directors probably siding with uh, the deep-pocketed uh, parent, whereas for companies like probably Tata Chemicals, where anyway there isn't so much need of cash, uh, or even Indian hotels, which definitely saw a better uh, administration under Mr. Mystery's regime, there will be a different behavior by the minority shareholders and the independent directors. You think that could be the way things will pan out? Yes, I think so, because uh, minority shareholders who obviously will want to be assured that the interests are kept safe. And I think generally it's a more a matter of perception. You see, the Tata name is important to the minority shareholders. 
and possibly many of them will get swayed by the Tata name and support Rotten Tata group. Mm. So this is one aspect which cannot be forgotten in India. In India, people are emotional <laughs> and they are loyal to a particular group. <laughs> That's a fair point, sir. That's 